We never expected them, but they have come. There are many allurements. Young people have easily lured to dazzling lights in town where there is music and they think it's normal to go to those houses and do what you know you want to do best. Those are wrong places to go to because the influences in those places are disastrous. We've seen today, and it's a reality, our young people being lured into immorality. We're seeing it during the recent examinations. Unfortunately, we had very many teenagers. They are not even adults who are giving birth during the examinations. The question that arises ways our parenting because when a child grows it's a reflection of the parents what is our role as parents in nurturing these young people to be able to pick up good moral values or we have left them to the devil because the devil's business is to deviate people from the right path. We say you shall not do A, B, C, D, but the morals, the business of the devil is to tell you, don't listen to that. This is better. This is what we call transient entertainment. So what happens next? You see them drinking. Drinking is a deadly sting. Let me put it to you. Somewhere in the Bible, I think in, uh, in Proverbs 20, verse 1, it says, wine is a mocker. And you will get your peers, your age mates, telling you who are not properly grounded in the Bible, they will tell you, Oh, it tastes nice. It's very nice. The taste is sweet and beautiful. Yes, it's made sweet but beautiful. At that moment, when you drink it, you feel excited and you think you are at the top of the world. All that it does, and I can tell you as a doctor, it just inebriates your mind. It makes you feel that you are at the top of the building when you're actually working on the grass. It makes you feel that you are more important than anybody around you and therefore invites you to do very awkward things that you normally would not do when you are sober. No wonder the same Bible in Proverbs says, wine or any drink will lick the joint but will bite the heart. Because if you don't take care of yourself, that will be the end story. And you know what happens. You go into alcohol, the next thing you do, you go into other illicit sex, and you go outside the values of life. This will not give you the opportunity to give you a best. This will not give you the opportunity to serve your God with all your might. This will not give you the opportunity to order your life because sooner or later, I'm talking to the young people who are here, sooner or later, you become a father or a mother. How would you like your children to grow up if you yourself are living in a manner which is far away from the values that were set for you. So drug abuse in this country and in the world is the order of the day. I get ashamed sometimes in my uh, Caesar functions outside there that when you see 
people as I walk around. Very inebriated because of alcohol. From morning till evening. They are of no value or any use to any one of us. It's very saddening. But I did not come here to give you a very hopeless feeling. <laughs> Let me remind you that when I look at Proverbs 10 verse 4, it just tells me that he that has slack hand becomes poor. So you have a choice. When you have slack hands, you become poor. When you are hard-working hands, you become rich. Rich in glory, rich in the material things that you have here, but if you are lazy and you have slack hands, those riches just disappear. They are not there. So you will not be able to leave them. Let me assure you that God himself wishes us well. He doesn't have hard feelings towards us. He wants us to grow in the right way. He wants us to prosper in the right way. When we're in church, let's pick the values which will sustain us in the storms of life. When we're in church, let's pick the habits that will help us to overcome the many challenges we see in life. When we're in church, let us learn how to be obedient to our super person who is God and how to be obedient to our parents. No wonder if I read the book Jeremiah, and that's the, the one I want to quote, Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 14. What does he tell me? Jeremiah 29, 11 to 14. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Say amen. To give you what? The devil promises you death, but the God we serve promises you a future and hope. That's where we should stand. So whatever you do, do it with all your might because you have a future and you have a hope. You are not somebody who is cast out there. And he says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen. I love that word. I will listen. When you do what he has told us to do, he will call us, we will pray to him, he will listen, and he will listen to us. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. You will seek me and you will find me. Whether you have challenges in life, so long as you submit to him, you will seek him, you will ask him, and you will find him. What a wonderful God we serve. That he's available. How many times when your friends want to reach you, you are unavailable? Am I not right? And these are your friends. <laughs> but our God has got an open line for us that he's able to reach us and he can be able to answer and listen to our prayers. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I'll bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I've driven you. What, wherever you have gone, if you have steered away from the Lord, he will bring you back. Because he's the only one who has the hope 
and the expectation. I'm elected to National Assembly or to Senate. I always pray when I'm in that Senate that God help me that whatever I shall say in this house will be the truth and the truth only. So I don't start adding my own words that do not fit in. What choices do you have in life? Do you always say, God, I've wandered away from you, but I can see there's a window of opportunity you've given me. I come to you in full repentance. Can you forgive me? Can you help me? to overcome my habits? Can you help me to become strong? Can you help me to have a clear mind? Can you help me to have a good physical body? Can you help me to find a good partner? Can you help me to find an obedient husband? It's very hard for husbands to accept that. Because those are the realities of life. At the end, we must move that level. That Lord is available to be with you all the time. And uh, you know, the things that I sometimes see in life are very difficult to understand. But let me leave you with this thought. In 1 Peter 5, Verse 5 to 9. The whole gist in that area, in that verse, 5 to 9, is the idea that you submit to God. If you read the verses before then, talking about husband and wife and what have you, submitting to one another. But when you reach that verse, verse 5 to 9, the whole idea is God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. You pay nothing for being humble. You pay everything for being rude. If you are rude, you'll be locked up by police. If you've broken the law, they will just come and pick you up and they'll lock you up. You make noise, they will still lock you up. You appear in court, you don't show good manners, you don't argue your case, you'll be locked in. But if you are humble, before anybody takes action on you, they will say, hold on, who am I dealing with? They see in you somebody who is different. They see in you somebody who is peculiar. That's why we are a peculiar nation a peculiar people. Just by the way we worship, we are a peculiar people. We're a peculiar nation. So I, don't, I didn't come here to give a full someone but a, a small little snapshot of what it should be. That at the end of the day, I would like to go and sleep knowing I've done my best today. I've obeyed my parents as my first duty, I have obeyed God, my creator. I have worked very hard. I have earned my day by working very hard, by tilling the land, or by working in the office without stealing time if you are in the office, or by doing my homework if you are in the school or you are in the university, so that you have no chance of going to cheat in the examinations. Because then God has already made provisions for you. So it doesn't mean when you're working hard, it's a place of work that you must go and do manual work. You can work hard with your brain by doing the right things. You can work hard by using your manual hands. Because that's what, has given God, what God has given us. You can work hard by doing your homework, by studying. That's working hard. Do it well. Don't do it in a slipshod manner. Do it well. You can work hard by helping somebody who is helpless, extending a hand of 
friendship and fellowship to somebody who is not doing well? Who is your neighbor? That's the moral question. Who is your neighbor? Are you able to extend that hand of friendship, of fellowship to somebody who is not able to do it right? If you are singing, sing to the glory of God. And I'm looking forward to hearing that singing to the glory of God. And when you sing, would you be able to extend that message in the song to others beyond Lavington Church? God bless you. Thank you very much, Elder. Thank you for those words of wisdom and the exhortation from God's word in giving our best. In continuation of that, I would like us to make a transition again. We are blessed and privileged to have again one of our own. And uh, as she comes up front, I'm going to call her. We're going to sing a first stanza of Seek Fast, the Kingdom of God. Uh, Sister Susan Muchache is uh, one of our own, and we are blessed to have you come and be here with us to grace the occasion this afternoon, the worship service. And I request kindly that you just again come up front as we sing this song. And uh, she makes a transition to make a uh, word or two. I know that I'll say it earlier that we'll have a moment or two just ask them a question. Then we'll make a transition to the program that we are here to have again. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah. Hallelujah. 